What's the date, Ryan? It is September 19th, 2016. I know it's Monday. It is. I know that. A dreary Monday. And we have an awesome special guest that you're going to be interviewing. We do, Who is that? Yes. His name is Robert Petkoff, and he is going to be playing Bruce Bechtel in the national tour of Fun Home. But we've loved him, oh yeah, we've loved him in many things. Yes. I, I first remember, like, really falling for him as Perch Chicken Fiddler, the mm -hmm. last fiddler. Yeah. And but um, I just saw him do Ragtime. Yes, uh, and uh, Sir Robin and Spam a lot. It's a lot. That was a big one for me. <laughs> this is like a great, juicy gig for him. I'm excited. Yes. So uh, he's here exactly. on the other side of the camera. We'll, we'll get to him. Very shortly. First, we're going to talk about news. So speaking of Fiddler, yes. uh, Judy Kuhn, uh, and speaking of Fun Home, I mean, this all yeah, uh, tied together. Uh, she is going into Fiddler. She, she just is. finished her run in Fun Home, and she's going to be Golda in Fiddler. Through the end of the year. For Well, she doesn't start until she's going to do the holidays. She starts November 22nd. And then she's going to do it until closing on New Year's Eve, yep. December 31st. So, so that'll super, be amazing. Super, I've been like, I'm like a super fan of hers. She's since, fantastic. Like when I, when, I, when I was a teenager and fell in love with Broadway, it was like, she's the voice. Disney so, movies. So yes. excited. The voice is back. <laughs> the voice is back quickly. Uh, sad news over the weekend. We had some some Broadway deaths. Yes. Um, Edward Albee. I mean, I that's know, like that's, that's like an icon. Yeah, he's an incredible, was an incredible playwright. He'll yeah. be very missed. He was fantastic. 88 years old. Um, the Broadway is dimming its lights on Wednesday night for, what is it, one minute? I think yes. it's a one minute at 7.45 yep. p.m. Um, at, would you remember the first time you saw an Albee play? Like, do you remember? Like, I think as probably a teenager in high yeah. school, like Which that one? kind of, oh my God. I, Did I, you ever see the one with the lizards? No, I don't think so. I no. See that one. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, Who's Afraid of Virginia Wolf? Yes. Obviously, uh, Play About the Baby. I remember mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the, the Three Tall one. Women. So many yeah. great plays. Um, so, anyway, that's a huge loss. Uh, Charmaine Carr, who is that? From better, the, better known as? A, a better known as Lisa. Uh, Lisa from 16 Going on 17, Sound yeah. of Music. She also died over the weekend. She was 73 years old. Um, and... That's that's the that's the end of our that's sad, the end of our part obituary. of our show. <laughs> so, uh, so good news, plenty. Yes. Are you excited for plenty? I am super excited for plenty. What are yes, you excited the cast about? Cast is crazy. Well, who, who, well. Are you, who are you excited about? Because I think we're probably excited about the same person. <laughs> well, uh, I'm very excited about Rachel Vice, but. But who are you excited about? Corey Stahl. Corey Stahl. I know. I'm super excited for yes, that. Yes, he's amazing. He's amazing. It just got extended. I think it's a huge hit. The public theater. It was supposed to go through November 6th, and now it's been extended two weeks. Before even opening. To the 20th. Yes. Uh, right before Judy Kuhn starts as Golda. So she can go see it, and then she can do Fiddler. <laughs> um, we did a, out Judy's. We month. did a poll of sitcoms. Yes, that should be. What was that inspired by? Some sitcom? Because that's... of uh, Family Ties? Is that the Family one Ties is becoming into? a stage show. Yep. Some, for somehow. Some, somehow, somewhere. Yes. Um, so we asked everybody which other beloved sitcoms would you maybe These are want. great answers. And my favorite sitcom did not make the top ten. What's your favorite sitcom? Facts of Life. Oh. Oh. I just thought that'd yeah, be great. But, oh, the, but you work. guys picked other ones and the top five, Boy Meets World, never I, saw it. I love Too old. that. It's so great. Really? Oh, it's great. You're, you're oh, young enough. Number four, The Brady Bunch. Sure. Number three, Full House. Number two, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And number one, Friends, Friends. Which I guess we should have known. All right, fine. Uh, have anyone has everyone heard of La La Land? So excited for so La La Land. So La La Land is going to be like the big hit of a word season, yeah, I think. It's and it's a musical. musical for it's here. a movie musical. And it's from the guy that did Whiplash, which was incredible a couple of years ago. But the, it also, the movie. yeah, and also the lyricists of the songs are Pasek and Paul. So they have Dear, Dear Evan, Evan Hansen, Hansen opening on Broadway. And then this movie is blowing up all the film festivals. It just won the Audience Award at the Toronto International Film Festival. Yes. The, the ones the people Tip. choose. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. And Reunited. apparently it's just beautiful and magical and a real classic movie musical. Can't wait. It sounds like Broadway that. fans are really going to like it's it. It's going to be big. Uh, ben Vereen, Broadway fans like Ben Vereen. Mm -hmm. He just got cast on, uh, well, he's in Rocky Horror. Yes. It's your show, right? Yep. Halloween week on Fox. Now he just got cast on Fox's new show, which is called Making History. Have you heard of this? I have not heard much about this. So th I looked up the plot. It's crazy. It's about three friends from different eras of time who have a time traveling machine, and they figure out how to live in all three eras. I don't oh, know. It's crazy. Fascinating. So maybe Ben Vereen's like from the 1700s or something. Oh, that'd be great. I, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? But, but ben Vereen might be time traveling on yeah. TV. And <laughs> apparently he has a show he's trying to 
ready for Broadway yeah. called From Brooklyn to Broadway. Which is like an act that he's it's had like, for a Yeah, I'm bit, sure right? it's like a solo show. And it, there's no actual plans, but apparently he's working on it. Keep your eye on so that. So Kristen Chenoweth might not be the only uh, solo show coming mm-hmm. to Broadway. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ryan McPhee, shout out to Ryan McPhee for remembering that that was also the name of Lilius White's <laughs> cabaret act in the 90s. <laughs> from Brooklyn to Broadway. Well done, Ryan McPhee. So there's that. Emmy Awards... Yes. Sarah Paulson. Finally. I totally screamed at the TV. I she's been nominated how many so times? So many times. Ever since she, she met Ryan Murphy, she's been she nominated. She should have won for which one? She should have won for Asylum. Thank you. Yes. American Horse Story yeah, Asylum. Lana Winters will Lana always Banana. go down. Yes. Lana Banana. Yeah. yeah. But she won for playing Finally. Marsha Clark. Yes. And she was with Marsha Clark. And she had Award. Marsha Clark's name engraved on her Emmy set. It's kind of an amazing friendship she's they the have. She's the best. Courtney B. Vance also is one step closer to Tony Winner for Lucky Guy. These yes. are now, yeah. And then uh, Tommy Kale. Yay! Oh my Two-time God. Tony I believe Award. I predicted Tom- Emmy Award. Thomas. Sorry, Thomas Kale. <laughs> I believe I might have predicted on this show. Months ago, I after Grease Alive, that it was, he was yes. going to win an Emmy because yep. that was phenomenal. Also, halfway beat to an ego. Great people. Okay, now quickly, ask us start with Leona Lewis. She's coming in next week. Do you have any questions for her? She's leaving Cats in early October. Mm-hmm. But do you have any like parting questions for her, maybe, about sure her time do. as a kitty? You can ask them. Angela Lansbury was amazing over the yep, weekend. Yeah, 25th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast, and she sang the song live and sounded fantastic. With Alan Menken on mm-hmm. piano. Oh, amazing. Angela, she's coming back soon, hopefully. Beth did a one-on-one with Robert Creighton, Cagney, Just the off-Broadway musical hit. He's Cagney. Great. Very charming. And also, tickets are now on sale to see Kristen Chenoweth's show, to see The Glass Menagerie with Sally Field. Amazing. Big shows. Big shows. And what's the other really big show that just went on sale and blew up the box office? Hello, oh, Dolly. Oh, yes. Featuring Set Bette records. Midler. It's, it's, I mean, they like Biggest broke records day. already yep. That's nuts. over the weekend. It's huge. Everybody so wants to see So that's going to be the big show in this show. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you right. why don't you welcome our special yes. guest, and I will get out of here. Thank you so much, Paul. And here is Mr. Robert Petkoff. Welcome him onto Live at Five, everyone. Hello, sir. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you. <laughs> Aren't they lovely? Oh, so huge. Thank you so much. Yes, we get a lot of people in here. Thank you so much for joining us, Well, thanks sir. for having me. Um, I have to say, I want to sort So the big exciting news is that you will be playing Bruce Bechtel, National yes. Tour Fun Home. Breathe. It's incredible. Breathe. It's a long... It's a big role to live with yeah, for, yeah, for a year. For years. How excited are you, though? I'm very... I mean, you know, it's such a, it's such a challenging role. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking earlier today yes. about... Just, you know, first of all, just walking in the footsteps of Michael Cerveris, who, Michael you know, Cerveris. some people feel he did an okay job <laughs> yeah, uh, you yeah. know, doing that on Broadway. People were, yeah, they were like, oh, yeah. good job. Uh, he, he, because he's so superb, and he just, he just created such an amazing characterization mm-hmm. of that. So, you know, there's that, that you look at and go, okay, no, i got to try that, right, too. Right, right. And so, you know, we were working. We've been layering in, and we've been, we've been trying to figure out, you know, like Sam Gold such a good director mm-hmm. and, and to be in the room with Sam and Janine Tesori this and cast, Music Chronomy, right. just astounding. And this, and this cast, cast you have is amazing. You've really got Kate Schindel as Allison. Yeah. You've got this great Abby Corrigan oh. one as is just a You're gonna love her. fire. She is fantastic. The kids are adorable. Yeah. Like you have it's it, it should yeah. be fantastic. And Susan Moniz who plays yes. Helen uh, and I actually played another dysfunctional couple. We played Buddy and Sally in Chicago a couple years ago. Oh, in Follies. okay. Uh, right. So we, we only ever play a bad couple, <laughs> or a troubled couple, I should say. I have to say, you, and I mean this in the mo- you are sort of the typical, just like the actor's actor. You have been a working actor oh, for, you're very welcome. You've been working for so long. Is there some wood you're in t- <laughs> no, wood. You've You've done TV, you've done theater. I, I first fell, like, I first got to know you, so I'm a big Michael Corrida fan, oh, the author, yeah, and you do yeah. his audio books, yeah. and those who wish me dead, check that, check out all of his books, but I but remember that, that. Was it's cool. fantastic. That was cool, because they had those two characters who talked, two brothers who just talked to each other. So creepy. It, yeah. when, they're, when they're ready to kill somebody in the room with them, they just talk to each other, and they're like... What do you think he wants? It's the most suspenseful. Great. It's so good. So I remember, like, and then yeah. figure it out. But you've been a Broadway favorite for a while. Like we were saying with Paul, Fiddler on the Roof, Ragtime, yeah. Spamalot, Anything Goes. I've been very lucky. Yes. And, well, we've been very lucky as <laughs> oh. audience members. Okay. Um, but you're, you began your very first Broadway show, Epic Proportions, with, with Christine the Chen- Christian Chenoweth. Yeah. What was that oh experience Oh, my like? God. It was incredible. <laughs> well, you know, I had auditioned to play... Uh, one of the roles opposite her that Alan Tudyk ended up playing, mm-hmm. and they offered me the understudy, and and it took me a little while to go, yeah, okay, I should, you know, I should do this, and the first day in the rehearsal room, watching Alan do the the scene that I had auditioned for, 
and I and I thought, oh my God, there's no way I would have gotten this role. And he was so funny and was mm. just so amazing. But Kristen Chenoweth, I, I just remember, because I, I didn't, I had not seen her do anything right before that. I didn't see the, the uh, peanuts uh, that she did. Um, right? Yeah, oh, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. Yep. Um, and watching her, just like I'd never seen a, anyone with that kind of comic timing, and just the funniest human being I had ever been around, and gorgeous. So right. I was like, oh my god, this is like this woman is amazing. <laughs> this is my first, yeah, yeah. And what a way to start. And oh yeah. just, you must. And I was been. shaky when I got to first go on with her. I was very right. nervous, you know, uh, to kiss Kristen. <laughs> yeah. so. Totally. But and I, but I think I think ragtime was correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. It was a big moment for you. That was big. Uh, you know, uh, Manuel Felciano had done it down in Washington D.C. and he couldn't do the Broadway run, and I was lucky enough to get into that, and that was such a. That was such a great role, yeah, and, and a real, a real uh, spotlighted role, uh, more than say, uh, you know, Perchik or, or one of right. those things. So that was really just an extraordinary. It's such an extraordinary. And that play. production was beloved Dang, as yeah. as it, as it yeah. should have been. And I, I don't know if you remember it all, but you you penned this really lovely essay for Broadway.com oh, about how you. You went back and you, because you had always heard these stories about your great grandfather and your grandfather yeah. coming over, and you went and you talked to them to kind of get the full story, and yeah. it sort of just you say it opened up, and it was the best theater experience you had oh, ever had. It's phenomenal. There was such a connection, and I mean, people talk about theater sometimes in religious terms or in ceremonial terms, mm-hmm. whatever. And and I hadn't experienced that very much, but that was a time where I felt this connection through the floor, through history, to the people that brought me into being. Right. It was it was astounding. And that story, all three of the major stories in that in that musical, it, that musical is perfect. Mm-hmm. I, I don't agree. understand why that musical doesn't run it's on just Broadway a, it's just for non-stop. 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. But let's talk about Fun Home a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. So you guys, you kick off in Cleveland mm-hmm. October 5th. And then you are just, you're going all over the country. We're everywhere. What, um, what are you looking forward to most about taking the show across the country? Is it the, to get it in front of eyeballs that wouldn't have seen it here, to spread that message? I What's think that's absolutely it. I mean, I think that, the, obviously, you know, you, get, you do a tour, you get to travel, mm-hmm. and you get to see America again. Try and, the food and, and everywhere. Try the food <laughs> everywhere. You know, when I was on tour with Michael Severi in, in Spamalot, and Michael knew how to do it because mm-hmm. he made sure that every city he was in he was a tourist. He, he, what are the things that you see here? What are the things you eat? Right. And, and I'm like, that's how you do a tour. You just tour the country and, and you do your show. But it's, it, this show is so important for right now, for, for America, for, for mm-hmm. the world. And, and so to be able to take this out to people who, who A, may not decide to come to Broadway, sh- may not decide to come to New York to see a Broadway right. show, may not have gotten the chance to see that when you know ticket prices are expensive for everything, so you come in with your family and you're like, I can only mm-hmm. see Wicked, you know, or whatever. Um, so it's nice to be able to go out in the country and, and share this really, really moving story with, with so many people across right. the nation. It's an unforgettable show, and if you have like make sure. But what was your first experience with Fun Home? How, how did how, how was that? I was I was going to audition for possible Broadway replacement, mm-hmm. uh, and so the night before that, I went and saw the show, and and I remember, uh, you know, weeping like a baby yeah. at the end, and you know that is not necessarily my experience with my own father. That's not necessarily mm-hmm. my own experience with even my own sexuality, but it is such a human story. It, uh, 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 regardless of the central uh, conflict between Allison and, and her father, that any conflict between fathers and daughters, the idea of, of having to feel ashamed of what is in your heart, uh, right. of, of what you love or who you love, uh, and how destructive that can be, that, that just ripples across every uh, segment of, of humanity. Sure, yeah. And so I just remember just being embarrassed, first of all, you know, we're sitting there just like, <laughs> okay, just I'm not not. stretch. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm a big fan of the, of the, when the lights go down for curtain call, the quick rub, mm-hmm. where you're like, the quick swipe, and okay, wipe it away. <laughs> okay, their guys are great, and I'm not crying at all. Great voices. Yeah. You're but it. God, I mean, you know, just, just moment after moment in that show, it, 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 it starts out, and you're like, what am I watching? You know, what am I seeing? And then it's just the it steady just drum beat. Yeah, and then yeah. you've got those last numbers. You've got days and days and days, and you've got uh, telephone wire, and mm-hmm. you've got edges of the world, and and fly uh, flying away. Right. And flying away was like the nail in the coffin. You know, I'm sitting. I'm, I'm holding this together. I'm holding this together. Yeah. Um, and of course, it's a part of me watching Michael very closely. Like, right. you know, what what's he doing with this? And I'm like, 
I cannot possibly do that tomorrow in an audition. <laughs> you know, that, that's weeks and months and years of work to get to that level of specificity. Mm -hmm. um, and strange, you know, the, the, the choices that come out of finally understanding who that conflicted yeah. man is. That yeah, there's a lot to right. there's a lot to dig oh. there. If you actually, yeah. uh, uh, Alexa has a question. If has Michael given you any advice so far about playing Bruce? You know, I haven't talked to him specifically about about playing the role. Um, we we talked. We had, there was a lovely picnic that the one of the producers uh, uh, had uh, for everyone for both casts uh, in the summer, and we we uh, just sort of talked briefly. But you know, I think I think the only thing he said to me that I can recall was just you got to be honest. with Mm -hmm. You just got to be really honest with this, and it's absolutely the best advice for acting in general, you know. Right. But uh, but I haven't. I wanted to sit down with him, and then I didn't want to sit down with him. You know, what I mean, it's that conflicting thing of I, I want to I want to just dig in and ask yeah. everything, and at the same time, it's your experience. You want to build your own. And I want to yeah. build my own, and and, and I want to respect that. You don't. You shouldn't give up your secrets. You shouldn't have to talk about mm -hmm. what it is, and you can't possibly. I can't possibly do what Michael did because Michael is Michael, you know. Right. So it's, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's it's a small little cast, so you'll all get to, in in essence, you'll get to be a family on the road yeah. playing a family. Yeah. Is Are you looking forward to sort of building those bonds oh, with everyone and spending yeah. that kind of time? Yeah, and it's happening in rehearsal already. You know, it's great. Abby uh, Corgan, who's, who's 18, you know, mm -hmm. that is already uh, every morning uh, at rehearsal. She's like, hey, Dad. You know, we're getting that already, <laughs> yeah. and the kids are kids, and they just, I love kids, so we're, we're, they are great. we're playing great. So it's in, already starting, which is kind of nice. You guys are in for a big treat, too. Jeffrey wants to know what it was like working with Brian Princeton in All the oh, Way. God, that guy's good. Mm -hmm. That guy's good. Uh, um, you know, and he's so normal. What I, what I love of Brian is that he's one of these actors that had what I call the struggle. You know, where you, you just worked as an actor for years without becoming famous overnight. Mm -hmm. Because of that, you really appreciate what you get when it comes, or if right. it comes. And Brian is like that. He's just a normal guy, you know, uh, and funny as all get out. I mean, he's a really great sense of humor. Um, and just a real craftsman. Mm -hmm. when it comes to what he does. And when you look at just the, the variety of roles, I mean, to go from playing the dad on Malcolm in the Middle yeah, to know. being Walter oh, White to be... It's and that's it. And that's the career I think most actors aspire to. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, I'm sure there are people who are like, I want to be a big famous star and just be, a, a, you know, an action movie hero. Mm -hmm. But most people who consider themselves actors are like, I want to do, I want to be versatile. I want right. to have everything. Right, and, and that's Brian. In the beginning of your career, you were very Shakespeare sort of fa yeah. focused, right? Like yeah, I you started a lot of classical theater and a lot of straight theater, and it wasn't until late in my career that a director I had known in college, Gary Griffin, mm -hmm. um, had said, "Do you still sing?" Because I had done a musical in college, and and I said, "Well, I sing in the shower." And he goes, "Well, I'm, I'm doing Sunny in the Park with George, and I want you to play George." Right. So I'm coming first to New York and listen theater to role. That's what that was, was a little crazy. <laughs> that was a little crazy. That was like, okay, right. sure, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'd listened to the album when I was in college. Right, I right, know right. the songs. And so, yeah, that was that was nerve-wracking because while I was doing it, during the day I would be taking technique lessons uh, with Tom Murray, the music director, just to sort of solidify myself. Mm -hmm. But that show... Oh, I mean, show. Sunday Come in the on. Park with George. Yeah. It's just, there's another one. Why is that not running for 20 years? On yeah. Run? Well, yeah. that's... Keep that in mind. Come on. <laughs> uh, Joey would like to know, this is a really interesting question. So when Fun Home began at the public, it was proscenium, mm -hmm. but then they were in Circle and the Square Theater, so it was in the round, but now it's being restaged for proscenium. Yeah. How is that sort of process coming along? It's coming along great. I mean, you know, w one of the great things that Sam Gold, was our director, was talking about was that um, they learned a lot of things in the move from the proscenium at the public to the Circle and the Square about a lot of it was just less is more. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that how much of the story could still get across without having every piece of furniture, every antique. At the same time, it is such a central theme to who Bruce Bechtel is, is that he, these things mean so much to him yeah. that they, they found a great sort of middle ground on this, that we start um, with objects, uh, we move through the set, but it's pretty spare and, mm -hmm. and pretty bare, kind of like Circle in the Square. Right. And as the play progresses, when we get toward the very end, suddenly we start to see more substantial set pieces come in. When when um, at Medium Allison comes home from college, suddenly you have the the room. Right. And, okay. and so it, it's kind of fabulous that it starts from memory, and so it's just fragments and pieces. And as the memory, as she goes deeper into those memories. Uh, 
uh, the set becomes more solid. Uh, it's inescapable. Right. right. And one of the things that I particularly love about Fun Home is it is, I mean, you're in their home, so it's a very intimate sort of human scale show, but there are like showstoppers. There are these like great yeah. numbers that elicit yeah. such joy. And, oh, yeah. And, and so you'd be able to see those. And, and uh, rip your heart out. Right. Yes. And yeah. then rip your heart out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe would like to know what is your favorite moment in the show that doesn't directly involve Bruce? Ah. Um, you know, certainly changing my major to Joan uh, is great. But I will say that. If watching Judy Kuhn do it and watching Susan Moniz now, um, the the thing that destroyed me the first time I saw it and I had a hard time getting through any time is when uh, Helen says to uh, uh, medium Allison, don't you come back here. I didn't raise you to give away your days like me. Now, I remember hearing that. And look at me. I knew you were going to say It's doing it to yeah, me right it, now. Totally. Is that just that, that in and of itself, I think that moment to me, it, anyone who has a mother mm -hmm. um, can can relate to that in some way. You know that right. that, that it just it just devastating. And and so I think that's one of my that's it's my favorite song in the show um, is that song. And and, to, and they're both just you know Judy just kills it. Yeah. And and Susan the first time I saw her do I was like you know I'm and Rebecca Luker she oh, destroyed yeah. I saw me. Her <laughs> yes, video. That's right. I was telling friends about it after I'd seen it <laughs> saying you guys got to hear this song you got to hear this song and I played Rebecca's thing. That is such a perfect so. bit of storytelling. Uh, uh, it's just amazing. Yeah. So many, so many great. So, like, you have made a, a fantastic career out of doing theater, out of doing the audiobooks, out of doing television and film. Is there a dream role? Is there a dream show? Is there something that you wow. you just want to? You know, going back to Shakespeare, I haven't played the Scot yet, um, and that's one. And Richard the uh, Third, very hard for me because right before Ragtime began. Uh, I was supposed to go to Chicago Shakespeare Theater and play Richard III, mm -hmm. and I thought the shows were going to happen with a very, like, a one-week overlap. And instead, uh, they moved up ragtime, and so I had to drop out of that. So Richard III uh, is one, and, and Macbeth is the other. I said Macbeth. No. Oh, yeah, careful, careful. And I think, and this is a, a great question from Joe also. Michael said he didn't read Alison Bechdel's book because he wanted to create his own idea of the character. Have you read the book? I did. I actually read the entire thing, and and but I, I agree with Michael in that there's a portrayal of Bruce in there that is, you know, it's harsh. And the script for Fun Home isn't necessarily identical mm -hmm. in, in that, and the way that Michael shaped it is that. And so I'm working against some of the the ideas in the book. So it's kind of good that I've read it, yeah. but now I'm letting that go and finding who this guy is. Because, you know, you, you can't, you can't think you're an awful human being <laughs> right. when you're playing someone <laughs> like that. Yeah. And he's very complex because at times he's a wonderful human being. Right. Um, so lots to discover. All right. Yeah. Well, make sure you guys check out the National Tour of Fun Home. It kicks off October 5th in Cleveland, going all over the place. Robert, thank you so much for joining ah, us. My pleasure. It's been such a great time. Thank and you. And we'll see you guys tomorrow at Live at 5.